in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let us all stand as we give the Lord some praise. As we give him some honor and glory that is due unto his name. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship, we worship you. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. You are good and your mercies endure it forever. You are worthy, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Sing, I just want to praise you. Lift my hands and sing. of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved in the name of Jesus. We're going to welcome Sister Joanna Deacon is coming back to come and open us in a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you this morning. Father, we exalt you this morning. 
Lord, we bless your name this morning, God. You alone are worthy, Father. You alone deserve the honor, Lord. You alone deserve the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness this morning. We thank you for your grace and your mercies this morning. Lord, we thank you for health and strength this morning. Father, we thank you, O oh God, even for our troubles and our trials, God. We thank you, God, in everything, Lord. Your word says in everything, give thanks. So, Lord, we thank you this morning. For, God, we know if you bring us through to it, you will bring us through it, therefore. Father God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for bringing us through this week. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for your preservation upon our lives this morning, oh God. Father God, as we come gathering together, God, Father, those who are joining us online and those of us that are here this morning, Father, we ask, oh God, as we come before you, God, that our worship will come up to you, God, as a sweet, sweet smelling flavor tonight, this morning, oh God. We pray, oh God, that your holy presence, oh God, will be so real among us, oh God. We pray, oh God, that our hearts, oh God, will be conducive, conducive oh God, to receive, God, and to give back to you, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you will cleanse our heart, wash, cleanse our hands, oh God. Lord, for your word says, who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? You say he that have clean hands and pure hearts who have not lifted up their souls unto vanity, not sworn deceitfully, O oh God. So Father, we come this morning and we ask, Lord, that you will cleanse us, O oh God. You will wash us, O oh God. You will purge us, O oh God. That our worship, O oh God, will be real before you this morning, O oh God. Father God, we ask, O oh God, that you will bind us together with cords that cannot be broken this morning. Lord, we come against every devices and plans and operation of every demonic influence in this place this morning in the atmosphere, God. We pull them down in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare, God, your free access, God, your presence, your spirit, oh God, to move in this place, oh God, that life will be convicted, life will be transformed, oh God, life will be edified this morning, oh God. Father, you know each and every one of us, God. You know our hearts, you know our needs, oh God. So we pray, mighty God, that your spirit will speak to us, oh God. We thank you for the anointing upon our musician, upon the worship team, oh God, ministers this morning. We pray, oh God, for unction, oh God, to function, God, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning. We pray for revelation, knowledge, oh God, will come through every song, God, to minister minister to every heart, oh God, to that specific need, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray for your spoken word. Oh God, we know God that there is a word in everything, God, that will be ministered here today. And we know God that you have the specific person to minister to. Lord, we pray, oh God, that we will receive, oh God, and we will be with willing to obey as you will minister this morning. Father God, just saturate this place with your presence. Saturate the atmosphere, mighty God, with your presence, Lord. Father, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, oh God. Let your spirit, oh God, just hoover over every life, God, at the sound of this service this morning. Lord, have your divine way. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done as it is in heaven. Lord, let it be done and out. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Let the listening audience on Facebook and on YouTube Hear the praises of his people. Come on, you may have a seat for a moment. As you listen to a few announcements. Hallelujah. 
God is good. I said, God is good. He is a good, good God. He is good. He is awesome. He is faithful. His righteousness is awesome. Please listen to this announcement. Please note that the Bel Air Outdoor Sunday School will be reopened this afternoon from 4, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Plato's Residence. Parents in Bel Air area, please encourage your children to attend. Please note the Boys Club will meet tomorrow, Monday, the 4th of April, tomorrow at 4 30 p.m. at the Daphne Community Center. We are asking parents to have boys between the age, between the age of 6 to 12 years old. Please send out your boys to Boys Club. So for those of you who have boys at home, it will be very interesting. It's not just about cricket and sports, but they will be educated also in the world and in the word of God. So please be encouraged to encourage your children to come out to Boys Club. On Wednesday the 6th, please know that this Wednesday from 7 p.m. We, we will be meeting in church. We will be meeting in church Wednesday at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Please listen. 6 p.m. We'll be meeting in church for our prayer and Bible study, which is School of Prayer and Christian Enrichment. This Wednesday, we'll be meeting in church. Also on Friday, the youths will meet this Friday, the 8th, at 6.30 p.m. at church. They will be discussing the Holy Spirit and you. The speaker will be Deaconess Joanna Kamabash. So all youths are invited to this session. On Saturday, work will continue at the GT, GTT Vision Center at Daphne, at, at the Vision Center at Daphne this Saturday from 8 a.m. All men and young men are asked to take note. Friday, April the 15th, please know that the Jive by Crusade will be held on Good Friday, the April the 15th, 2022, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. The route for this crusade will be held on the main road between Bel Air and Calboni. That is the, the route will be from Bel Air to Calboni. Sunday, April the 24th, Shrewd and Recognition Sunday. Please note that the Students Recognition Day will be held on Sunday, April the 24th commencing at 9 a.m. Under the theme, my attitude more than my amplitude determines my, determines my altitude. This service will be broadcast live on NBC Radio 705. You are asked to be seated by 8.45 a.m. And these are all the announcements. These announcements will be posted on the bulletin board. Also, they will be on the website. So please take note. Now it's celebration time. It's celebration time. We know we are celebrating life. And at this time, we want to celebrate. Is there any who will be celebrating a birthday from today? right down to Saturday. Is there any who will be celebrate? Makisha. When day will that be? Hello? Friday. Sister Jackson. 
today. Wow. Come on, give them a hand as they celebrate their birthday. What about an, an anniversary? Is there any way we'll be celebrating an anniversary throughout this week from today until Saturday? I guess no one in church married in April. Okay. Well, we are celebrating life. Give yourself a hand. And let us all stand as we continue to celebrate the goodness of God. He has been faithful to us. Amen. God has been faithful to, to us. Our God is greater. He is stronger. Come on, put your hands together.
is unsearchable and we stand amazed what amazing God we serve hallelujah 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 we bless your name I stand amazed in your praise there is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. Stand amazed. Stand amazed. Where there is joy, peace, and hope.
just close your eye for a moment and sing it. One more time, you do mighty things. Mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful, you're a faithful. Awesome is your name. You do man. You do glorious things. You're a faith. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so What shall I render? What shall I render to Jehovah? To Jehovah. For he has done so very much for me. Come on, sing Nara, Nara. Nara.
Let's just take a minute and just reflect on his goodness. For what shall we render to our God? What shall we render to Jesus for the many things he has done? Come on, you're hearing wars and rumors of wars, but God has been good to us. You got to understand the God that we serve. Even bad times, He is good. If He said He is a very present help, He always there with us, even to the end. Come on, we need to understand the God that we serve. We need to understand that God is a faithful God. He is faithful to the end. Even when we feel like giving up, God is faithful to the end. He is faithful. Come give me that G note. He is faithful.
is your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. And I'll never will forget. Cause you never. God is faithful. When we are not faithful, our God is faithful. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. God is good and His mercies endure it forever and ever. His mercies endure it forever. I love the Lord because he first loved me. He didn't just love me, but he saved me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And as we take up this morning tithes and offering, we're going to bless him double, double. And your blessings will be double, double back from him. It's giving time. What are we giving God? Hallelujah. What are we asking God for when we give unto him? Are you asking him for your healing? Are you asking him to save your children? Are you asking him to touch wherever you need to be touched when you give? That is a prayer of your heart. So Father, we thank you for your offering. That your people is about to give unto you. God, we pray, O oh God, that you will bless them abundantly, O oh God. Lord, many may have not, will not have much to give, but they give unto you. Lord, I pray, will open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings upon their lives. Touch them, O oh God. Minister unto them, O oh God. Lord, we may not know how, we may not know when, we may not know where. But with you, all things are possible. As we give this seed of faith unto you, give us a heart of courage. Help us not to give it with self, but we'll give it all unto you. For you deserve the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Say hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey, my God is good. Hey, 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 my God is good. Let me hear you say.
As we give the Lord some praise. God is good. All the time. He's good all the time. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at this time, we just want to welcome our Bishop Sonny E. Williams. As he come to share the word with us. Come on, somebody welcome him as he come to declare the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord. God is good. Amen. God is a good God. A wonderful father and friend and savior, and we give God thanks. So welcome this morning. We are happy to have you here this morning. And uh, so welcome. Um, it's like the, the dawn of a new day in terms of the restrictions. Because you notice our seats are back as normal. Um, and uh, so spread the word around that we have lots of seats. And um, the limitation in numbers is over. All right? I, I suppose some people didn't hear during the week, but please... Help us spread the word to say those days are over and we are praying that 
We're not going to go back to that. To God be the glory. So welcome this morning, and we are happy to have you, um, our, our brother. I am terrible at remembering names, and I don't want to call you um, Sister, Sister Kamabash brother. <laughs> but my brother, we are happy to have you here, and uh, welcome home from the big coal apple. <laughs> and it's so nice that you've I'm sure that you have drank in a lot of nice sunshine and you're warm and nice to go back <laughs> to the coal. And to all the others here this morning, we are really delighted that you are here with us in our, in our service this morning. And just remember a couple of things that on Wednesday, we are back to in-person prayer meeting and Bible study, and we have made a switch in the time. We will begin at 6 for our prayer meeting, and then our Bible study will be at 7. So please make the, the adjustment. Uh, it's one hour off, and believe it, you're going to get it back. All right? So we're not going to say that we're starting earlier, but you're going home the same time. No. And uh, at the end of the month, it's our students' recognition day. And it's the day that we celebrate students. We pray for you, um, for your academic success. And so for that Sunday, we would want to invite all our students to come on out and uh, to come in your school uniform. Okay, so um, remember from next week, it's no shift system anymore that you come this Sunday and you don't come next Sunday. There's room in God's house for everybody, and uh, we hope that we are all going to be here to lift up the name of Jesus. God been good. It's been a long, two years is not, two years is not two months, you know. I mean, we've been going six months and six months and then when we thought that it's done with. Six months and six months, two long years. And we celebrate the, the, the departure of this enemy. Enemy of man sent from hell to bring woe on the earth but we give God thanks that he has preserved us. We've lost some good, wonderful people. But I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad that you are still here. I'm still here. I'm still here to praise him. That's what the song says. I'm still here. All right, turn your Bibles with me to the, to the book of 1 Samuel. Chapter 12, 1 Samuel 12 and 23. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your grace and for your, your great help. We praise you, Lord. We need you. Father, I need you. As I declare your unsearch the unsearchable riches of the kingdom. Thank you for the ability to communicate clearly and convincingly. I thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to do this work. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, my Redeemer, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 23. The prophet Samuel. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way that is good and right. And we talk today about the prayer of the sin of prayerlessness. The sin of prayerlessness. Did you know that there was a sin too? The sin of prayerlessness. Here is a funny, here is a funny piece. A man was being pursued by a roaring lion, feeling the beast's hot breath on his neck. And knowing that his time was short, he prayed as he ran. He cried out in desperation, Oh Lord, please make this lion a Christian. Within seconds, the frightened man became aware that the lion had stopped the chase. When he looked behind he found the lion kneeling, lips moving in obvious prayer. Greatly relieved at this turn of events and desirous to join the lion in med meditation, he approached the king of the jungle. When he was near enough, he heard the lion praying. And bless, O oh Lord, for this food for which I am exceedingly grateful. So Samuel is addressing the Israelites on Saul's coronation, their first king. And he made this profound revelation about our responsibility to pray. He said, be it far from me if I didn't pray for you. And he called it a sin. Prayerlessness. And prayerlessness is failure to pray, not just breaking some religious rule. It is failure to treat God as God. It is a sin against his glory. Prayerlessness is our declaration of our independence of God. That's when we don't pray. That's what it is. A declaration that I don't need you. What an awful sin. Prayerlessness is a sin against the person of God. Prayerlessness is a sin against the purpose and the plan of God. Prayerlessness is a sin against the promises of God. Prayerlessness is a sin against the power of God. And what do you do? What do we do with sin? The Bible says if we confess them, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. When we fail to pray, we fail to treat God as God. A 
And I will quickly show you. We will take a walk through the Bible and you will, you will see. You will really see the importance of prayer. We will see it there. So early in the Bible, when, when we encounter, when we encounter Isaac and uh, in, in Genesis, and you encounter the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you are impressed how their prayer, they pray with a sense of familiarity and directness. They pray in a sense like God is their friend. So look at Genesis 18 and 23. Then Abraham approached God and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? For God had shared a secret with Abraham that he was about to destroy the city of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, Abraham talked to God like you talk to a friend. Please don't do that. Why would you do that? He is praying with such Closeness and intimacy with God. Among the children of Israel, prayer was essential in their lives. Very, very, very essential for Israel. And the gift, the gift of prayer was made for Israel, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 7 says, What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? Which other god which other God is like Jehovah? When we pray to him, Jehovah is a very present, present help in times of trouble. What a privilege that we have as believers over the unbelievers. We have a God who will answer prayer and why, are we, why aren't we availing ourselves to this mighty, powerful tool or weapon or whatever you call it? That is because this sin of prayerlessness is so prevalent among the church, and God's people. We talk about COVID-19 and what COVID-19 has done. Perhaps we, will, we could more say what the sin of prayerlessness has done more than COVID. Because I tell you, COVID cannot beat the child of God who knows how to pray. COVID is no match for our God if we had availed ourselves to be close to God. The entire book 
The book of Psalm is a prayer book. If you want to pray and you don't know how to pray, open the book of Psalm. It's some of the most profound prayer that you could find anywhere is in the book of Psalm. It is really a prayer book. It records the cry of the hearts of many of God's saints. And Psalm 65 and verse 2 says, You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. And that's this, that's the, the essence of the book of Psalms. The God who answers prayer and to you, all people, all people, man, all people will come because we have a God who answers the prayers of his people. And if God answers the prayer of people, why aren't we praying more? You see, the enemy is aware of the power of prayer. The enemy is a, eh, keep them not praying. Disrupt their prayer lives. Keep them busy. Keep them complaining. Don't make them pray. Because when the Bible says, when the weakest, mm, when the weakest get on his knees, what Satan does? He trembles. So if the weakest, what about if all of us could unite together in prayer, we will shake the kingdom of darkness. Oh, you who answer prayer, to you all people will come. Solomon, when he finished the work of the, temp the temple, and he dedicated the, the, the temple with a magnificent prayer. If my people. And, and you can look, you can go. Go to 1 Kings 8. Go to 2 Chronicles 6. Read up on it. And essentially Solomon was, was saying... He was praying that petitions will be made in the temple. He was saying, listen, this is a place of prayer. And you hear Jesus echoing it when he entered Jerusalem. And he is outraged because the religious people used the temple to exploit and to profit here. And he said, my house, my house will be called what? House of prayer. House of prayer. Could we call every church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines a house of prayer? When the least activity that go on in those houses is prayer? We sing a whole lot. We preach a whole lot. But not a lot of prayer. If you call a prayer meeting, it wash out. My, this is embarrassing. The name of the house. What do they do in the house of parliament? They make laws. What do you do in a supermarket? They sell food. What do you do in a hospital? You take care of the sick. And God's house called a house of prayer. Are we afraid to come to prayer? What an indictment. So Solomon's prayer at the dedication was, 
to pray to God, oh God, let this house be a house where people will petition God. Let this house be a place where people will lodge their complaints. Let this be a place where people will bring their petitions before me. That was essentially the man's dedicatory prayer. The book of Job records Job's suffering, but also it records his prayer. Because anybody who will suffer like Job have to do a lot of praying. I, I, and you notice that naturally we don't love to pray. And, and that's why sometimes a plenty difficulty come to us. If that's the only time we pray. So. And then we know the whole story about Job and his friends. How his friends criticize Job. Plenty, plenty criticism about Job. Plenty acquisition and all of them wrong. And God said to Job, I will refrain from punishing them hypocritical friends that you have if, if you pray for them. I find that powerful. I find that very, very, very powerful. And God said, I will cancel the punishment I have for these three hypocrites who have, who have just been miserable comforters to you if you will pray for them. And it's recorded at the very end of the book, Job 42 and 8, it says, So now take seven bulls, seven rams, Go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourself. My servant Job will pray for you. And I will accept his prayer. And uh, not deal with you according to your folly. you like Job, man. You have to pray for people, man. You have to not pardon them. Pray for them. <laughs> Please don't pray for them. <laughs> but you know how we, you know how we sharp and we mouth in this country, St. Vincent? Oh my God. How we will whatever one another. But God said, pray for your friends. And Job prayed for them. Prayed for them. The Jewish people, as they went into Babylon, their preservation and return from exile was essentially carried out through prayer. Their exile began with prayer. And the, the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29 and 7 said, you're going to be in Babylon for a long time, 70, 70, 70 years. That's a long time. So the prophet said, build houses, live normal. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into, into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And the thing about it is, we have a responsibility to pray for the nation that we are a part of. Amen? Pray for them. Don't, don't pray because, you know, but I mean, I support that government there. 
They didn't support them fellas, they them fellas, they look at what them fellas they do, them fellas they take away people who work and all of them things. They me, me I pray for them fellas. Eh? But when you don't pray for them, you know what you're doing? You're sinning. Because the word say that we must pray for all men, for kings and rulers, that they may live a what? Peaceable life. That the prosperity of the country is whose prosperity? Ours, man. Our prosperity, man. When, when the land prosper, you get work. You, you get it? And we know the devastation when COVID closed down the airport and all of them things there. And all the people who rely on tourism and, and um, transportation and entertainment and hospitality and all of that. People went without a dollar. And we've got to pray. We've got to release. We've got to release prosperity over the land. Amen. We've got to release. This is not about politics. This is about prosperity of the land. We release the spirit of prosperity on the land, man. We release peace, man. We release. We release peace. We release prosperity on our farmers, on our farms. May they prosper. May they do good. When they prosper, man, your children will get job. Your children will get scholarship. Man, when you work, church get tithes. Everybody bless, man. Man bless. Man bless and good now. They put on a room at the house. You builders get work. Say, man, pray to the Lord. Where you live, prosper it, man. Where you live, the block, the street on which you live, man. Ask God, man. Listen to me. Mash up some of them relationships that you see there, man. All them shocking up there, man. Hey! Oh, you don't want to pray like that? Pray. Lord, send some confusion in them shocking up things, man. Send some girls running back to their parents. I was in Daphne, the junction, and I saw a group of teenage boys coming out of the work room. And I got, I got some, I got some message from the Lord as to them boy them. Listen, some villages. If there is not a revival in some of your villages, listen to me. Some of you will not sleep in peace. God showed me, listen to me, the activities of some of these guys. They are gondoliers. They're goons. They're soldiers. Pray that God will turn them, man. Pray that God, by the Holy Spirit, will turn some of these young men or else. There'll be no peace for us. Yes, Israel survived because of their prayer. And then Daniel, remember Daniel was in the exile. And Daniel prayed. In fact, Daniel got into trouble because of his insistence on praying three, day, three times a day. He said, I pray 
three times a day, regardless. King or king, no decree or whatever. I am a praying man. I pray to my God, whatever. And it got him in trouble. But I love Daniel 9, 20 to 23. It's a very instructive um, passage about spiritual warfare and about prayer. He said, and Daniel was praying, while I was praying, while I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sins of my, my people Israel. So he praying and confessing his own sins. And he confessing the sins of the nation. Oh God, forgive us from gossips. Oh God, forgive us from lying. Forgive us from victimization and wickedness and spitefulness. Forgive us of all them sins. Sin of lawlessness. And rebellion. He's confessing his sins. Of his nation. And making my request to the Lord my God. And he said, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man of God, I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. And he instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word was sent out, which I have come to tell you, for you are Highly esteemed, therefore, consider the word and the understanding. And we know how another area and another subject of the warfare in the heavenlies and how the message was intercepted and delayed. And sometimes when you and I pray, remember victories are won in heaven before they are manifested in the earth. And spiritual forces will intercept your prayer and del delay your prayer. But what do you do? Pray on, my brothers. What do you do? Give up. That's not an option. Not an option. When your prayers are delayed, what do you do? Pray more. Hold on there, my brothers. Daniel said, the moment you prayed, it was the dispatch, but it was delayed. Nehemiah, after the, the captivity, came back with the children of Israel. And uh, the book has a series of great prayers interspersed with wise leadership. So chapter 4 and 9. But we prayed to our God and posted a God day and night to meet the threat. So wise leadership and a much prayer. And I believe our, our way out of this pandemic and the and the and the effects of it will be about prayer and wise leadership at all levels at our governmental level prayer and wise leadership at the church level prayer and wise leadership in your family prayer and some wise action. That's the way we are going to make it. When we pray, what God will do, he gives us understanding, man. Understanding. He will position us to take full advantage of the opportunities. Nehemiah prayed 
chapter 6 and verse 9, they were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed. Isn't that song like the vision center thing? Eh? Isn't that song like what we are doing down at Daphne there? Eh? Amen. Yeah, yes, man. I've been, I've been a part of plenty, plenty projects that people say. We were building a church in, 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 in Beckway. And when we dug the foundation, a member of the community called the pastor and said, Hey! Were you guys digging up there some holes? Dying to finish. Lovely, imposing building now stands as a testimony. God, God can do it. We pray, we pray. Last week, I, I, I weren't here because I was outbound to St. Lucia. And the church that we had, the, the conference done in, in Viewfort. A gentleman went to burn the church. The pastor was accustomed with a small group to go to the church every early morning to pray. And that morning, God stopped him and the others. Their security camera picked it up that the gentleman went into the church with a can of gasoline. And he doused the instrument, the chairs. And then he made, he made a, a trail of gas to the door. And then security, all on the security camera. Then he lit, he lit, and dropped it in the gas. And it out. <laughs> Will you hear that? Gasoline and flame. The thing out. <laughs> Nehemiah. Nehemiah did what? When he was faced with an uphill task and all the mouths were said, that will never done. It may never done for some of them who say so because they might go to glory. He prayed, oh God, strengthen my hands. Oh God, May the spirit of discouragement not hit the few workers. Oh God, do that. And I have news for you. Sometimes I go there to do my little thing and I pray that God send angels. Send angels. Oh, oh, that's a funny prayer. Send, send laborers in the person of angels. Strengthen their hands. Strengthen their hands. Why are we not praying more? When prayer is a game changer, when prayer makes the difference. My friends, is a sin. And then when we come to the life of Jesus, you know, Jesus was a praying, praying. The God man was such a praying person that he prayed, he just prayed. He prayed and prayed and prayed. He prayed morning. He prayed days. He prayed nights. He prayed all night. <laughs> Man was just praying. He was wrapped up in prayer. And look how we entered our, our, our area in Luke 2, 21 and 22. It says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized. And note this, as he was praying, as he was praying, heaven was opened and the 
Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son in whom I am well pleased. Hebrews captures Jesus' prayer life in Hebrews 5 and 7. When it says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears to the one who can save him from death. He was heard because of his reverent submission. Perhaps as you go home, you could take some of these verses. They are loaded. They have so much in this. Because it speaks to the man's fervence, but also his reverence. His fervent. How he cries out before God. And how he is submissive, not my will. I'm willing to accept anything that you want. Not my agenda, but yours. Cries out before God in prayer. The early church was a praying church. After the resurrection and they were preparing for their future ministry. They do so by being constantly in prayer. Look how it started in Acts 1 and 14. They all joined together constantly in prayer. You know, we want to see the power But we don't want to pay the price. And that's why our version of Christianity is so fake. We want benefits, but not the process. And that is why there are so many of us who are so dependent on others. You always need somebody in your life or your backslide. We believe always somebody is going to do it. God is going to send somebody. But the early church, how did they do it? Constantly together in prayer. When the Holy Spirit came, Chapter 2 and verse 44, what did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to breaking up bread and to prayer. It was a commitment. This was a commitment, a firm commitment of the early church to pray. Peter, and all of that in Acts 11. What was he doing? Acts 11 and 5. He was, it was while praying, he got this vision. And then chapter 12 and 5, they locked Peter up, they locked Peter away, they locked the man up. And it says, so Peter was kept in prison. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Early church prayed. They prayed. Victory will come no other way but through prayer. Any other way it comes, 
it fake. It ain't gonna last. It's not gonna last long. No way at all. So what's what's the point of me just going through the Bible and showing you in the scripture? The point about it that I am trying to say is, you notice, wherever God is, prayer is. You see that from, from what we are saying? Wherever God is, prayer is. God is everywhere. So because he's everywhere, there must be prayer everywhere. Always. For beyond what we do in our corporate prayer is what we must do individually. That we must teach our children. That's something that they naturally must do to pray. Our young people to pray. And I'm reflecting, I'm just reflecting of my, my own youth. And I'm reflecting on when I was at Bishop's College. That's when, that's when in 1970, <laughs> 74, around there. That's many, many moons. One of the things that I believe kept me and others is about prayer. We used to. Bishop's College had mango trees in the back. And that's where we used to be. We go to the mango tree to pray. And believe it or not, our prayer used to attract our unsaved friends. Used to come also to the prayer meeting. For us to be praying. What are we doing these days? Everything else but prayer. For in fact, these days, if there is not an entertainment in what we do, nobody comes. Church is about entertainment. You know, you know that's a culture. You know that's a culture we, we, are, we are part of. If you go at any big event, whether it be a speech or something, I notice that. Who listening? Who really listening, by the way? Everybody talk, they do that, da, 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 da. It's about always. If I'm not being entertained, I'm not, and I'm not downplaying that we have to have hook. We have to have plenty hook to hook people. But do we always have to hook you? When you catch a fish, do you have to every day go hook the fish? At some point, the fish, the fish is in the boat. And there is this strong reliance these days on the entertainment part. There is no substitute for prayer. Where, everywhere God is, prays. And I know one of, the, one of the marks about a move of God, there will be prayer. There will be prayer. Holy Spirit came. And what you saw naturally happen is a church praying. I want to be close to God. It's a mark of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Prayer. And no wonder Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, that we must pray continually. Not stopping, not getting fed up. Pray continually. For prayer is like, we must plug into the power of prayer, man. Plug it up there. Plug into power. They say, Vinlek powers your world. Now so the ad say, Vinlek. Powers the world. What powers the Christian? Prayer powers the church. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon was delighted to take visitors to the basement of the church 
where groups of faithful people were on their knees praying. And he will proclaim, here is the powerhouse of the church. Here is the powerhouse of the church. Glad tidings, where is the powerhouse of glad tidings tabernacle? Where is our energy? Where is the engine of glad tidings tabernacle? Is it prayer? If not, we're weak. We're weak. Anything could move us. Anything could blow us away. Corona, whatever, 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 whatever. There is. Samuel said, Far be it from me that I will commit the sin of prayerlessness. How about you and I this morning? Do we just pray when we have a need? Or when we have a list that we take to God and say, God, I need these things. So God is your ATM machine then. You swipe your card. And after you have your needs, you don't want God. I have it all. No, you don't have it all. You need God. When you don't pray, it's a declaration of your independence. God, I don't need you. So pray. Prayerlessness is a terrible sin. Sin against God for being God. The promises and the plans of God. What do we do when we are aware that we have sinned? We have sinned. First John 1 and 9 says, If you confess your sins, He is what? Faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Don't ever get weary of praying. Pray. Some of you have been saying for the last 20 years I've been praying. Still pray. Still pray. Still pray. Still pray. Still pray. Because there are, there are things that we are not aware of. They are not, we are not aware of that our prayer has been saving us from some casualties and calamities and all of that. Keep praying. Keep praying. Mothers, keep praying for your children. Fathers, keep praying. Keep praying, man. Pray, pray, pray. There is always a need for prayer. Pray and pray and pray and pray until you get the breakthrough and still pray. Because you will grow to the point where you move this thing, it moves from duty to desire. Where I don't want nothing from you today, God. I just want to be with you. Wives, don't you get a nice feeling when your husband just wants to come and jump up near you? Uh, what the woman them now say yes no yeah oh man just want to be with you man nice feelings I feel needed I feel wanted God I just want to be with you it's about communion it's like your children just show up to say dad dad we just come be with you. I ain't want no money. I ain't come to beg you no money. I, I ain't have a need. I just appreciate you. You've been a good father. You've been a wonderful father. I love the way you treat our mother. I, 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 you're faithful. I'm wonderful. Ah, that move. That's when fathers want to take out everything that they have and give you. <laughs> is the heart of prayers. Samuel said that you sin against God and there is no prayer in your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for this word. The entrance of this word, give it light. 
We rejoice today, Lord. Oh, we thank you for this gift. This gift, Lord, the other gods can't give this. A God who is so near to us in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Let this gift be released among your children now. God, we pray for the desire, just the desire, Lord. Create in us the desire to pray. The desire just to be with you, Lord. I just want to be with you. I just want to be close to your heart. I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to just revel in your glory a little more, Lord. I want, just like Mary, I just want to sit at your feet and learn of you, Lord God. Take all of us, Lord, and create in us, Lord Jesus. God, for some of us who have not been Lord, we confess our sins and we say, Lord, how God could we have been so rebellious, so disobedient, so ungrateful, Lord, so audacious. We repent today, Lord, and we ask you for your forgiveness. Cleanse us now, Jesus. Wash us. Release your glory upon us, Lord. Lord, like Jesus, send your Holy Spirit that will empower us to do this. And we thank you. Jesus' name. Give me the confidence. This is my confidence. name of Jesus we pray. Your promise still stands. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never Still in your hands, great is thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail me yet. We'll change your position. And I'll never. That's our testimony this morning. And I never will forget. Amen. Because you never fail me yet. The promise still stands. Great is thy faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands.
because I have the sense this morning that in just about all of us there are some there are some situations that are naturally seem impossible some of you it is related to your health others there are there are some family members some children some is about financial so others is relational this is our confidence the God who answers prayer to you all flesh may come by invitation this morning so God we we place before you with a sense of confidence we place before you situations that seem impossible. God, Lord, some condition that doctors say there is no cure. You've got to live with that. We come to you in the confidence that God, that you say, the things that are impossible with men, they are possible with God. So we pray by faith and we drive out of body today. We drive out of bodies. Inflammation out now. We drive from out of bodies. Oh God. Curable conditions. This is our confidence, God. This is our confidence. In the name of Jesus, we bring some children this morning before you, oh God that have kept us awake that have taken our sleep oh God like prodigals we call them home this morning Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. of Nazareth Hallelujah. we are praying for a turn around in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Jesus. God we pray for some Relational situations, God. Turn them around. Turn them around, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Relatives, neighbors, deadlocks, stalemates. Oh, Holy Spirit, let bring harmony. Bring harmony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for this gift of prayer this morning. Amen. And I believe. Amen. I see you true with us. You made a way. Amen. Where there was no. Do it again. 
as we worship him. I see you move. Every situation. It's okay to worship him. I see you move. Every obstacle. Come and sing. Join us today. It is such a joy having you. And God bless you. Just remember, use the gift. Use the gift of prayer and see God work in your life. Until Hallelujah. next week, Sunday morning, when you will join us at 9.30. God bless you. Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Amen. And so we are going to move right into our communion this morning. Remember, we are going to still be doing it. We're going to start. This side will come to this table and the middle here. And then when these two sides are finished, we go to the wing. The ushers will come down. You still will. Uh